In this video, we're creating a Microsoft Azure storage account for blob storage using Terraform in five minutes or less. Before we can begin, there's two bits of software we need installed on our system. We need Terraform and Azure-CLI installed. I'll include links in the description on how to download and install these. On my system, if I run Terraform version, you can see that I have Terraform 137 installed. Now, you don't need this version, but it helps because if you run into issues and you're on an older version, or if you're watching this from the future, a newer version, you may have issues because your version does not match mine. And for Azure CLI, if I run AZ version, we can see that for this video, I'm using version 2.44.1. So to get started, I'll go ahead and create my first file and I'll call it versions.tf. And in this file, I will define all of the providers and their versions that I would like Terraform to use. Then I'll head on over to the HashiCorp registry and I'll click on the Azure RM provider and I'll go over here and I'll click use provider. I'll copy the contents of this box and then I'll head back over to versions.tf and I'll paste those contents. Go ahead and remove this comment under provider Azure RM and replace it with the word features and two brackets. This is a required block for this provider. Now I've told Terraform when you run Please use the Azure M provider of this version and go ahead and install it when I run Terraform init. Before we move on, let's go ahead and log in to Microsoft Azure using the AZ CLI. One of the most common ways for Terraform to authenticate with Microsoft Azure is through simply running an AZ login on your system. This will open a web browser on your system where you can log in to your Microsoft Azure account with your account. Terraform will use this account with the Azure CLI when it attempts to create its resources. There are lots of ways to authenticate to Microsoft Azure using the provider and defining different attributes under the provider. And I encourage you to check those out in the documentation. Now that we've defined the providers and versions that we want to use, and we have authenticated to Microsoft Azure, the next step is to create another file. And I'll name this file storageaccount.tf. I'll head back over to the HashiCorp registry in the documentation for the Azure RM provider, I'll click documentation and I'll search for storage account. You'll see we have a resource here called storage account. Go ahead and click on it. If we look at this resource, it's important to note that we have multiple different ways to define resources within resources. For example, on the Azure RM storage account resource, we can see that we have a network rules block we can define. But we also have an Azure RM storage account network rules resource separate from that. It is always best practice to, whenever possible, separate your resources instead of nesting them within each other. For our example, we'll go ahead and navigate to the Azure RM storage account network rules resource, and we'll go ahead and copy the example usage here. I'll head back over to my storage account TF, and I'll paste that into my file. It's important to note here that we are creating resources that are not required for a storage account, such as a virtual network and subnet, but they are required because we're creating storage account network rules and we need to define a subnet that we would like to define for our access control list saying only traffic from this subnet is allowed to access this storage account. Now that we've defined the code for the storage account, we need to go ahead and define the code for our blob container within the storage account. I'll head back over to the Azure RM documentation and I'll look for the resource Azure RM storage container. I'll go ahead and I'll copy the example code for this resource. I'll go back to my storage account.tf and underneath the storage account network rules, I'll go ahead and paste that code that I've just copied for the storage container. I'll head back over to the documentation one more time and I'll look for the Azure RM storage blob resource. And I'll go ahead and I'll copy this resource Azure RM storage blob. Again, I'll go back to storage account.tf and I'll paste that code in. And now I've defined what blob I would like to upload to my storage account container. Go ahead and take a look at all of the resources that we've pasted in and ensure the names are meaningful to you. Change the location of the resource group to a region you prefer. If we scroll to the subnet, we see we have a service endpoint for Microsoft.Storage enabled. This allows us to reach our storage account from our subnet. Go ahead and make sure you've changed your storage account's name to be something unique in all of Azure. No two storage accounts can contain the same name and it has to be lowercase only numbers and letters. In order to access our storage account from our access control list defined IP address, we'll have to list an attribute called public network access enabled and set it to true. Do that now. Also add the attribute account kind and set that to blob storage. Inside the storage account network rules resource, go ahead and change the default action from allow to deny. Go ahead and add your IP address from wherever you are running Terraform 
to the IP rules attribute as a string. And this is a list of strings. If you don't know how to get your IP address, go to Google and type, what is my IP? Lastly, you can see I've added a file over here called page3.pdf, one of my homework assignments. Go to the storage blob resource and change the source attribute to the path to that file. And this will be the file that gets uploaded to the storage account. Go ahead and change the name and this will be the name of the file once it gets uploaded to the storage account. With all that done, we're ready to run Terraform init to initialize Terraform and download our provider. Once Terraform init completes, we want to run Terraform plan just to make sure everything gets created the way we expect. Once the plan is done, if you agree, go ahead and run Terraform apply. It'll show us the plan again and we'll hit yes to approve. Once the Terraform apply is complete, go ahead and navigate to the Azure UI and verify everything is the way we expect it to be. If I go to my Azure account, look at resource groups, look at the resource group I created, look at the storage account inside of it, and look at networking, I can verify my access control list is now applied and it only allows access from the VNet and the subnet that I've specified and my IP address that I've specified. If I click on containers, I'll see the container created and then I'll see the blob created, which is the PDF file that I've uploaded. 